Hey, this is Amy with Flower Moxie, and today myself, Callie, and Jess is going to show you this pretty traditional asymmetrical arch. So first off, the arch that we have is an Aspen arch that we got on eFavor Mart. It was about $110, and I thought it would come in as like fake wood or like metal with like weird bark on it, but it was actually like straight up uh, Aspen in pieces and um, one thing that you need to know about it is they, they give you like a little screwdriver but you're definitely going to need to use your drill and your like driver screwdriver to get this assembled. So it was a little bit more challenging than we anticipated but I think it's definitely worth it for the cost. Okay, so for the flowers, we were originally thinking about doing something more traditional. We were going to green things out and then backfill with the roses, the carnations, snapdragons, mums, those type of things. But we're actually doing something different this time. And I think it's a bit more simple and accessible. And we were inspired by Sarah, who owns Intrigue Design. She's a wonderful florist and educator. And she did this large installation where the foundation was just dark red or burgundy alstroemeria, which is a pretty inexpensive flower that's often overlooked. And then she backfilled with really beautiful roses. And we were so inspired by this. I was like, I wanna try, I wanna see what it looks like. So for this install, we're doing Bright Alstromeria and Sweet for Love blush roses, and we're gonna throw in some uh, spray roses as well. So Callie's gonna start by greening this out, or I'm sorry, not greening it out, uh, covering the base with the Alstro, then she'll come back with the roses. So for the mechanics, we use zip ties and a foam cage on this side. And on the smaller portion, this is an eco-friendly route. This is an ocean pouch, and I use Oasis Rustic Wire to wind around it. Now, the one thing to know is um, with both of these, they will drip as you're adding the flowers, but typically after you've already added all of your flowers, then the dripping stops and you're good. So as I'm building, I like to come and put a towel right there and um, make sure I protect the floors. And lastly, Jess is going to show you some draping. So we bought some draping off of Amazon. It's linked in our Amazon store and we'll link it below. And we're gonna judge this up by taking some blush and white draping throughout this Aspen arch to fill it out a little bit. So we'll get started. So the great thing about Alstro is it comes with a lot of buds on one stem, typically five to six of them. And then there's really nice greenery, plus it's really hardy. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna try to create my basic shape and stay within those margins. Uh, but I'm also gonna bring it a little bit closer to the pouch to cover my mechanics. I won't need to be too heavy handed because I know I'm gonna come back with these large blush pink roses but I will create my shape and my margins with my Alstro. I'm doing it at various heights to create visual interest. I don't want it looking so compact. So you kind of see how I will sink some in, I'll pull some out and that's intentional.
Okay, at this point, I feel like I have pretty good coverage. I can see a little bit of my ocean pouch, but I'm not really worried about it because I'm gonna start backfilling with these. So I probably used maybe a bunch or like 10 to 15 stems here. In total, we had eight bunches, which is around 80 stems. And I think that's more than enough to do what we're wanting to do. Uh, with the roses, we're doing, we ordered 50 stems, but I think we'll probably stay within 25 to 35 stems by the time we're all done with it. So people are often really intimidated by arches and ceremony work just because it's on a larger scale, but I feel personally I have way more control. You can add a few things, get back and look at it. And one thing that you need to know is that you don't have to be super precious about it. No one's going to be up close to it in the way that they would with a centerpiece. So Oftentimes, if I get up close, I might be able to like look through and see a little bit of my mechanics, but when I get back, there's no way that that can be seen. So just like let that ease your mind that you don't have to cover everything in this like hardcore way. You can get back and look at it and trust that it will look just fine in your photos. So now we have the flower portion done and while it's tempting to want to do the draping first and then put the flowers over it, your draping will get wet. So you always have to start with the flowers, let all the dripping happen and then come back with the draping. So that's what Jess is going to do. She's going to mix this blush and this white and she's going to tie it with some bind wire. There's a lot of different things that you can use to tie it, ribbon, whatever, but bind wire is probably the easiest because it's soft. It'll protect the fabric and it has a bit of wire to it so you don't really have to knot it. You can just twist it on itself. So uh, we decided that this is a little bit too peachy uh, for our flowers. It matches the spray roses but not so much the Sweet for Love. The Sweet for Love pulls a little bit more mauve than blush and this is pulling a little bit more peach than dusty blush. So we're just going to come in with the cream. So it's always good to have a friend <laughs> who can make sure that nothing is dragging on the ground. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of feed it down on this side, um, kind of holding it above the flowers. 
to make sure that it's just going to come down enough. Then I'm going to, perfect, flip it over, <laughs> super uh, technical terms. I'm going to cut a piece of bind wire, and I'll usually double it up just to make sure it's super strong. So that's just kind of folding it in half, making sure it's equal. And then I'm just going to go behind my flowers and kind of do almost like a big twist tie in the back. So I don't think we'll have enough length for it to go as far down. OK. So since we're only doing the one now, we're just going to kind of correct our uh, length a little bit. Is that good, Amy? I think so. OK. So just twisting it together, bind wire is the best. You can even use it as a hair tie, I have. And that just kind of secures it. And then you can fluff almost even, tucking it behind. And it just creates like a beautiful drape um, alongside the wood um, to soften it a little bit. So then we're going to come to the center. As you can see, Amy's kind of draped it really beautifully here just to kind of accentuate the pleating. I think it got a little twisted, so I don't know if that's... I kind of like it. Okay. Um, what do you think? I like it. Okay. <laughs> just, you know what I did. <laughs> I, like I twisted it, but... I know, I got it all fouled up. So then you want to kind of make sure that it's a nice drape. So I usually ask someone to stand back a little bit further to make sure that I am um, kind of equal. And sometimes you'll need to kind of play with it a little bit to make sure that you have like a good I usually like to kind of separate it out, pulling up the top and almost shortening that to make sure that it's got like a really nice drape. And then you're going to come forward, give it to your friend, and flip it up and over to create kind of this other nice little loop. Perfect. And that's also going to kind of help to hide any of your mechanics where you um, kind of any joints that happen in the arch or like here we had some twine to make sure it was secure. And then I'm just going to come over and to make sure, especially if it's windy, you're going to want to secure the other side as well. And I will do that again, doubling up to make sure that it's super secure. And then going behind to make sure, because my drape here will kind of hide my mechanics from the back, so you won't even notice. And just give it a trim. It's beautiful. So this took us about mm, probably 30, 40 minutes to complete with the draping and explaining as we went. Uh, I would say if I was a florist, I would quote this out at about 1,000 to 1,500 because I would need to bring in the arch and the draping and all of the things, plus the labor. I would say using the Alstro base, we probably have about $300 worth of material. Uh, the draping, which is on our Amazon link, was about $20. And again, the eFavor Mart uh, factory, or I'm sorry, tablecloth factory arch was about $110, which we will resell on Facebook Marketplace. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>